Hey everybody, Schematist here. So recently I got a pretty interesting request, and I've not gotten this one before, so I feel like I should honor it. A few weeks ago someone asked, what's my thought process behind building a template and how do you build them? So since 2017 is coming to a close, and hopefully everyone had a good year, it's been kind of up and down for me, it happens, I want to start 2018 on a better note. So I'm actually going to build a new template now from scratch. And I'm going to just talk about what, what I like in my templates and maybe you can pick and choose things that you like and edit it with your own personal touch and you can create the one that works for you. So the first thing I like to do is I'm going to come over here to the channel rack, right? And I'm going to take all of these values to zero. I'll show you why at the end of the video. It makes a lot more sense. And I'm going to start with the kick. So I come into my black octopus from Leviathan and these kicks are really, really nice straight out of the box. I want something a little punchy, but not too distracting. All right. That's nice, so I can throw that in there. And I'm gonna rename everything, because that's just me. I'm gonna call it Punchy Kick, All right? So now, uh, I don't necessarily think I want a clap. So instead of a clap here, I'll, I'll switch it out for a hi-hat. I'll get a closed hi-hat, something with a nice tick, nice tick sound. Yeah, that's perfect. I'll throw that right in, and then I'll rename it. Closed hi-hat. Put that capital in there, going crazy. Okay, so we're going to get a, when we have a closed hi-hat, I also want to get an open one. So for the open one, I want something, something with a, a splash, a nice ting. That's nice. Something splashier. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so I'll throw this one in that chain there. Okay, that's good. So, again, rename everything, because I'm weird like that. <laughs> Open my hat. So, now the snare. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe I should get a... You know, I'll, you know what, for the sake of the video, I think I will throw in a clap. Um, I don't use them much, but... They can add a nice variation every now and then. So I'll throw in a clap here. And then, bam, rename that. So for snares, I want something not too bassy. A little nice thwap is nice. Nothing too in your face. Nothing too splashy. Well, that's nice. All right, so I'll throw that right in. And snare. So the drums are looking pretty good. Like the percussion and the percussion instruments are my first step. After all of this, I actually do like to go into my Gold Baby Drums Urban Set, and I like to put in a few kicks and snares that are like completely opposite from the first kick I picked. And I think this is, works well for breakdowns of tracks. So I'm gonna call it Lo-Fi Kick, just for just for difference. Difference is good, right? I like to think so. And then I'll go into snares and something with a tick sound as well. Nothing too distracting. Oh, that's nice. Yep, and that'd be fine. And I'll just call it, you know, lo fi snare. Why not? And so, what I'm going to do here is just now get the actual instruments. So, I am a sucker for synths. So, I'm going to go into this uh, plug in picking window and I'm going to go with my zebra. I'm a big fan of Zebra 2. Like, guys, trust me, Zebra 2 is amazing. Get it. I'm going to actually load up three instances of Zebra. It's one of my heavy hitters. I am not ashamed about it. I love it to death. In addition to Zebra, I'm going to go into my Omnisphere. And I'm only going to pick one Omnisphere instead because it's a very taxing program. And so I don't want it to completely slow down my, my computer and make it crash from time to time because, you know, it happens. And then from there, I'm going to go back in. And I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna put in Lethal. I'm gonna put in two copies of Lethal here. I think Lethal has its moments. I don't think it should be $300. I do love it though. It's very hard. I'm very 50-50 on it. But I think it should be bought on sale. So if you can find it for $150 or $200, I would highly recommend it. I, I just, I don't know. It's a little bit of a 50-50 with me and a lot of other people as well, but I have nothing really bad to say about it. So, with that, I used to use Massive a lot, but not so much anymore. I think my next heavy hitter is going to be Contact. So I'm going to load up Contact. Actually, I'm going to load up two instances of Contact. 
just to be on the safe side because I tend to use the the libraries that I have here a lot and so they're so varied so they can really be really versatile for different types of projects and I think that's the main key and I also have a couple in the quick load down here there's just there's just a really good option select with uh, contact this is really what I do like this is basically what I what I use to make any song and like if there are things that have to um, require different instrumentation choices I'll gladly go back in but this is my starting point so the fun thing here is I highlight everything right and then I'll go to the drop down arrow up here in the channel rack and I hit uh, da, 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 color selected and then go to gradient this is just for fun you don't have to do this but I like to have my projects that look a little you know unique so I'll do a nice blue gradient and um, the next thing is actually the most important thing actually in the whole video is uh, you're gonna also go back to the drop down arrow as with all of these selected still of course you're gonna go down to assign selected to free mixer tracks this is gonna take everything and color code it as well into the mixer track so you don't have to go crazy so if you want to add your reverb you want to EQ everything is nice and organized exactly as you have it in the channel rack here and that's basically how I write my templates so I guess the main last step of course is to save it so go to file, save as, and you want to locate the, f uh, the folder where your um, image line folder is actually. So I'm going to go down to my program files, um, image line, I'm going to go into FL Studio. Uh, you're going to go into data, projects, and then templates. And so I'm going to call it, oh boy, did I just like mess up? I think I just fumbled. Yeah, I did. I think I hit the wrong thing. So I'm going to call it Schematist, uh, maybe 2018 um, template, right? Something simple. And just save. And there you go. There's your template. So now every time you load up uh, FL Studio, this should come up and you'll be ready to go. If you do want to change your template, you can always do so. Just go to New from Template. And the next time I reopen and open FL Studio, it'll come up here. But these are the ones that I've had before. I've got a retro kit. And um, this is like, might take a little while to load. But the fun thing is, if you're looking for uh, like a retro theme project or anything of that nature, this is basically what I did. And it's really small. It's like contact, 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 all contact all throughout. You know why? Because each and every single one of them, I'm planning on loading up Super Audio Cart. It's like one of my favorites so far. And um, that's basically how I go about it. I don't usually swamp this too much with instruments. I will only pick and choose my, my heavy hitters. And then the little ones I'll kind of throw in from time to time. And I need to get my virus protection clearly because my lower bar is not up to date. All right, I'll do that later. All right, guys. So that's it for this video. And I'll see you next time. Take care.